Hello everyone, welcome to another session in the deep learning series. We will continue with the numerical example of uh, sample neural network which we were calculating. So we, in the previous session we completed the forward pass for the particular neural network. Th this is that particular neural network we have completed the forward pass. The next pending this thing, the, the next pending this thing is backward pass, backward pass or back propagation. Now what we do in the back propagation is we are basically at the output stage, correct? Now we are basically moving from output to output to the second output to the second hidden layer, right? That is what this particular this thing represents. So you are basically back propagating the error. You are moving from output to hidden layer two. Right? So consider this L one. Okay, L one is basically this particular node. Right? Over here you basically have three inputs right so you have k1 l1 k2 l2 k3 l3 so basically what you have to do is you need to back propagate the error okay so conceptually back prop back propagation is i would say it's nothing complex you basically apply chain rule uh, so you apply chain rule and uh, you basically calculate derivatives applying chain rule and uh, you basically update your weights so conceptually it's similar to your uh, linear regression gradient descent calculations right so over there for updating weights uh, what you basically used to do was used to take old value right old value minus learning rate into delta right so that was your updated weights over here in back propagation as well almost literally the exact same thing happens but the only complex or complex thing over here is you you have huge number of weights to calculate huge number of gradients to calculate in linear regression it was only say one dimensional this thing over here you have say suppose you have a three cross three matrix right so if you have three nodes you have three cross three this is again for one node right for one node you basically have an basically three cross three matrix um, but say in this you have only three nodes right? this network is basically of three nodes Suppose you have a hundred thousand. Suppose you have a node of you have a thousand node uh, neural network, right? So basically, what you would do is you would basically be calculating thousand into thousand, right? You would basically so you you would be basically calculating the thousand by thousand uh, gradient matrix, right? So this is again for one uh, for one node. The same concept up, would apply for thousand nodes as well, right? So I think that's why that, that's what is the major difference. But in general, but when you look at conceptually, it's, it's the same. Only so you're basically calculating your gradient with the calculated gradient. You're multiplying your learning rate, and whatever output you get, you're basically subtracting it from your weight value, right? So yeah, so this is basically what is to be calculated for this particular node. So node or neuron what people call it i think node is more simplistic to follow so this is this is deriv this is all derivative this is all delta for each of your weights right so for l1 it's k1 l1 this is similar to your weight matrix the only difference is this is your delta matrix right? this is your derivative matrix this is k1 l1 k1 l2 k1 l3 k2 l1 so yeah this is your normal i think this is exactly the same as your normal uh, weight matrix the only thing is the only thing what you what you basically calculate is you basically calculate uh, change in weight change in weight from k to l neuron right change in weight from k to l neuron so how do you calculate that is you basically calculate so over here what is the output yeah output is error right so you basically take the derivative of error with respect to weight so this is where your chain rule this is where your concept of chain rule comes in since since you cannot uh, directly take value of your derivative of error with respect to weight, what you basically do is you break you break up the derivative, you break down the error derivative into so error into derivative of error in respect to output, right? Into derivative of output with respect to input and input with respect to the weights. So basically, what would happen? These two would get cancelled. These would get cancelled. So you basically would end up with the same thing. This is what basically is chain rule, right? Yeah, so this is where uh, application of chain rule is in uh, calculating uh, derivatives in back propagation. 
again you you have bit of uh, since since we'd be using all of this i'm just calculating derivatives of everything in the beginning only of every activation function in the beginning only this is your sigmoid so we did see in that particular uh, activation function aggregation different types of activation functions and their derivatives this is more or less that only this is relu derivative of relu next you have softmax derivative of softmax uh, nothing new it's the same only it is more or less the same whatever was discussed in that particular uh, page right so yeah so what what is the task at hand the task at hand is fairly straightforward right and i think maybe equation wise it might be a bit too much to look at but task is actually fairly straightforward you, you calculate derivative of your error with respect to output first next calculate derivative of output with respect to input and input with respect to weight right you basically need to calculate three derivatives now let us calculate the first derivative derivative of error with respect to output oh yeah basically what would happen is now you know your errors correct your error is nothing but your cross entropy correct now you basically what you do is uh, this, this is this is what is your cross entropy now you basically calculate this particular value right uh, so when you actually go go into this particular since it's since you have a positive sign you can take individual derivatives uh derivative y is a constant keep it aside log of x log of x is say since you're taking derivative of o out one and o out one is the value so it's nothing but log of log of x derivative of log of x is one by x then since one plus y of minus one is constant you keep it aside and derivative of one minus uh, o out one is nothing but one by one minus uh, the value so this is derivative of error with respect to your input sorry error with respect to your output so one one advantage of this is since all of these error notations would change correct you have, you have calculated over here for the first node first node or first neuron now for the other two nodes it's the same this thing is the same output only the, the only thing which needs to be changed is the notation so you're calculating the y1 here it would be y2 here would be y3 right so you need to make similar changes across uh, other uh, equations as well right so this is your first derivative calculation derivative of error with respect to your output uh, the next is next the next this thing what you need to calculate is derivative of your output with respect to your input right so your output is nothing but uh, your sigmoid activation function sorry your softmax activation function is basically what is your output and you have your input right uh, now basically what you do over here is uh, so again so this is in since you have exponential uh, this thing you would basically take similar derivatives so if you basically take uh, you basically move this stop right so it will become e to the power of uh, o in square uh, then o in 1 o in 2 o in 3 uh, so since uh, yeah so the derivative would be o in square because so this is this whole thing if you assume this as x correct so into x to the power of minus 1 if you consider the whole thing as x so it become x to the power of minus 1 is minus 1 to x square uh, so this is o in 1 o in 1 is basically a constant um, then this will be o in 2 plus o in 3 right so in a similar manner you would be calculating your derivative output with respect to input you would get similar values as well so that's what you are you over here right you basically need to just take the whole denominator as x i think all of this is sort of basic derivatives concepts so you basically take the whole thing as x pull it above it will become x to the power of minus one right so derivative of uh, 
x is nothing but n into x to the power of n plus 1, yeah, n minus 1. In this particular case, it becomes square, it goes to the denominator, so it basically would have a minus 1 at the end. Uh, yeah. So the remaining, so the remaining this thing, uh, next is derivative with respect to input with respect to each weight. That, that derivative is basically pending.